Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a continuation from last tutorial in which we have already discussed the, all the functionality within this random transform node. Today's topic is about how to avoid the intersection. So here in this setup, what you can actually see is there are two cubes which is colliding to each other. Sometimes you probably don't really mind about this kind of issue because we're making CG and you don't want to spend time to investigate all this kind of bullshit. But sometimes you do mind all this kind of thing. So instead of using all this kind of physics, which will completely uh, take over your setup, um, sometimes you want to like to have a kind of more kind of procedural way to remove the intersection or whatever stuff, but still attain, retain the ability to control all this kind of whatever. Uh, one way to avoid the intersection is probably just to evolve or change the random seed. Actually, this I would not call this as a solution, but it does work sometimes. <laughs> But uh, a, a real, the, uh, the real actual way that I would like to discuss is a node which is called a closed packing node. This node, uh, I think it's still a part of extra node. So if you don't find this node, then you should go to the link in my description to download the animation uh, by clicking that green button. Okay. So here, how should we actually use this node? This node is actually kind of very complicated. There are so many settings, so many controls. I'm not going to talk about each of them. Or even though there is no menu, but I think it's it makes more sense if you just play around that. Uh, and at some point, I don't actually even know all details within this node. But uh, you 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 don't necessarily know all details to use these nodes. Sometimes just a few parameters which are important is sufficient enough. So let's uh, let's just take a look with how it actually works. So it only receives points instead of matrices. So instead of output the matrices into that. Uh, I've already generated a location for you into the points and then you do have the matrices and the vector so what will happen if you plug one into the place so here let's just try to put these matrices into matrices and immediately you will realize that we lose our random trend, uh, rotation and random skills because we only put the locations into these closed packing nodes so this closed packing node is generating its own rotation scale data for its matrices instead of using our original matrices, whatever stuff. So how can we actually get back our rotation scales? Um, a method is basically just to take this offset matrices. This is probably the easiest method, and you just only need this location rotation scale. You put the rota rotations into rotations, and the scale into scale. So the most important point, you only use closed packing node to generate the kind of locations or or scale. Depends on the mode you're using. Uh, but I'm going to still going to retain this original random transform from earlier. So this kind of point, and you can definitely use the, uh, all the settings to control this kind of scales. It's just uh, uh, basically the same. Okay. Then I would like to talk about this. Uh, very complicated closed packing node. This, uh, this closed packing node is kind of very complicated. Uh, I don't expect you to actually remember all this kind of setting or whatever stuff. But I'm only going to talk about several most important points. Is firstly this dynamic rate. So there are three ways to avoid intersection. One is the scale, and which is discussed by this dynamic radius. Another is just to hide objects which are intersecting to each other. And the third method is to change their location. So these are three ways. And the, all three ways has been implemented within this node. So let's firstly take a look with this dynamic radius. So now we have all these kind of objects. So let's just try to give a kind of a more easy example with smaller amount of objects and so on. So now we have all these kind of five cubes and they will attach to each other. So now they are separated apart. But if I'm decreasing this translation value, you can see the moment that they are intersecting, this cube actually shrinks its size. And because it tried to avoid intersection. This avoiding intersection is not really perfect yet, is because the radius maximum is not high enough. So if you, you sometimes see the algorithm is not a very perfect then you just decrease uh, you just increase the radium maximum the radium maximum is basically setting a protection bubble from the origin of the objects 
and then it works perfectly fine until all objects shrink to known. Okay, so this is dynamic radius. And the second method to avoid the intersection is to hide all these objects. So here I still have all these kind of objects, but once they collide each other, then this object disappear completely. It does not really disappear uh, because I think you can still find that in this object somewhere. But the whole point is that its skill becomes zero, zero, zero. So that it's still there, but it, its skill is infinitely small, so you don't really see that. Okay. I think this is not very good for an animation because it's just uh, so sudden. Does not look really nice. So dynamic radius is kind of very frequently used and a very nice method, I think. Another mode. Uh, I'm not going to talk about other things basi because basically they're the same. You can play around with all this kind of thing. Another important mode is the relaxation method. This method is completely different. It's uh, going to change the location. So now I'm still decreasing all this kind of translation. You can see all these kind of objects are just uh, pushing, uh, pushing apart each other. It looks like kind of real physics movement. And again, sometimes the intersection that still exists is because the, of the protection bubble is not large enough. So now you can see these objects are just colliding each other, which is kind of very nice. And uh, even if you really get very close, they're still pushing around each other very hardly in order to avoid a kind of intersection. So this is a, a very physical like movement while you're not using physics at all. It's, it's still not 100% perfect. You cannot really expect not using physics for a physics kind of effect, but I think it does do its job perfectly most of the time. Before I end this tutorial, I would like to talk a little bit more about the settings with this scene, within these closed packing nodes. So if you select the node and hit U, there are lots of hidden settings, like neighbor amounts or whatever other stuff. I'm only going to talk about several things which I think is kind of important, but you can investigate as much as you want. So the most important thing, let's just let go with this margin, error maximum, and the iteration maximum. This margin is kind of a very confusing concept. It basically means um, how much distance you want to keep away from these objects um, besides the protection bubble. This is kind of a very weird concept. Uh, you, I don't actually even understand that very well, but it's hidden. You probably don't really need to worry about that because you do already have the, all this kind of radius that exerts all this kind of protection bubble. I, th I think it's already fine. But if you turn on the margin, it's just to separate the objects. But I don't think it's kind of very meaningful. So let's just forget about this margin. But uh, I really would like to talk about this, this uh, iteration maximum and the error maximum. So what happens with these two settings? So what, uh, so basically the principle of how this, node, uh, how this node works is that you firstly get all this kind of location of this object where you have all these kind of points. And then you measure their distance and to compare them to the radius that you set up so that you know whether they have actually an intersection or not. So if it has an intersection, then you will either uh, as mentioned earlier, either you decrease the size or you decrease uh, or you push the object apart or you hide the object. Basically use the three methods has been mentioned which have been mentioned earlier. But what will actually happen, especially in this relaxation method, uh, is that if you push this object apart, then you might collide with, for example, so if these two objects collide with each other, and you push this object apart to that direction. And you realize now you are colliding these two objects together. And so in that case, you have to repeat the algorithm again so that you push this object to another direction so that until you don't really get any kind of intersection. So this repetition is called iteration. Okay. And you can definitely iterate infinitely, then you will cost infinity amount of time to get your result. And that's why you set up a limit, um, which is set here about 200. Sometimes if you 
would like to have a lower iteration probably just set that to 20 or 10 maybe which is good enough and the second thing i would like to discuss is the error the error is basically how much you can tolerate the error because sometimes even if you try to so let's just set the iteration to one you can see we start to have intersection because you didn't really put a high amount of repetition on this algorithm so basically high iteration more accurate the entire method will be but it will cost them more performance the error is the error is basically the error so if you put that to 100 percent then it will just allow the object to the intersect but if you put that to 50 percent then half of the object will intersect if one percent of object then they may intersect but with a little bit distance which you may tolerate or which is kind of negligible distance whatever what happens is once the the intersection the error is is below the error maximum then it will stop iteration so even if you put uh, 800 iteration but if the error has been reached if the tolerance of the error has been reached early like the error is below this error maximum then it will stop iteration at a very early stage like maybe five or ten iteration is what you already stopped but otherwise it will just run this iteration until it hits the maximum and it will cost performance so basically what i want to say is when you're using this relaxation method or whatever stuff um if you think this node is cost a lot of performance it, it makes your execution time like 100 milliseconds or whatever then you decrease the, the iteration maximum or increase this error maximum whatever method whichever way you do so that you decrease the stress of your machine but uh, you also have to consider the fact that, that once you increase the errors then you do have intersection once you decrease the iteration maximum you may also have intersection so you have to weigh this balance do you want like to have an excessive amount of accuracy or do you want to have a performance because performance does hit your render time and the preview, uh, previewing fps or whatever stuff so these are the things to consider so i will finish here you can play around with all these kind of nodes um to see what uh, it actually looks like as you can see there is no errors or iteration maximum in dynamic radius because it's just a straightforward you just shrink object the size and you know whether you accomplish the job or not and so on and so forth so i will basically stop here so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i'll probably see you next time bye bye